Hi and welcome back. Tonight we've got another Mage Rage video. This time it's a channel that I've never tackled before. This is going to be interesting. As always, massive thanks to my members and patrons. I want to give massive thanks to all of my supporting members and patrons. Thank you all so very much. So tonight, who have we got? We've got Taboo Conspiracy 3. Why 3? I think his first two channels were taken away. Anyway, better get on with it. Got a lot to get through. Taboo Conspiracy 3, roll VT. Okay, Taboo Conspiracy 3. Let's see if you can bust Mage or if you're just going to be the latest addition to the Mage Rage List. Take it away. Hello, everyone. The point of this video will be to address one of the newest claims from the Globe propagandists that YouTuber Mr. Sensible was able to film the supposed curvature of the Earth with a high altitude balloon at 127,000 feet. Well, looking here, it looks as though I did, doesn't it? I'm seeing this bogus ball earther claim a lot lately, and so I feel compelled to address it. First of all, kudos to Mr. Sensible for getting his balloon up to 127,000 feet. Well, thank you, Taboo Conspiracy. It was quite an achievement that I couldn't have uh, managed without the help of Q. Thank you, Q. Thank you, Q. You know what I mean. Thank you, Q. Best move on. That's pretty good. I actually hope more people will continue to send up high altitude balloons. Well, it might be nice if some flat earthers try something like that or in fact any experiment above and beyond chucking an egg and some salt in a jug of water. But we live in hope. I think it's beautiful. Actually, of course, if the Earth was spinning at 1,000 miles per hour at the equator, then Mr. Sensible's balloon should have landed over a thousand miles to the west. That is the dumbest thing. I cannot believe, I really cannot believe that, that you cannot grasp conservation of momentum. If you're in a car and you throw an item up and down, it lands back in your hand. It doesn't fling itself into the back seat. If you're in a train and you stand up and jump, you don't suddenly shoot to the back of the train. If you're in a balloon and you suddenly take off, you don't suddenly whiz away from your start position other than where the wind is blowing you. You do not know what conservation of momentum is. This does not bode well but it didn't. Without question, Mr. Sensible proved that the Earth is indeed stationary. Well, perhaps you ought to ask that question of all the others on the Mage Rage list who have totally failed to debunk this. They've either just got things wrong, totally misunderstood or, or misrepresented. Which are you going to do? I also find it a bit ironic that Mr. Sensible and his cohorts claim that he filmed the curvature of the Earth when all globe propagandists believe in the magical effect of refraction. We are, at that point in the video, at 0.03% atmospheric pressure. There is next to nothing up there. There's nothing there to cause refraction. And anyway, refraction ain't going to make it bend like that. It supposedly removes the curvature and giant bulges of earth and water and places mountains of curvature far behind objects that should be hidden by the bulge. Now this is where you've obviously misunderstood. The refraction is an effect that's taking place in this direction. So if you're looking forward, it's lifting the curve or beyond the curve up. What we're filming is that you need to leave refraction because that's got absolutely nothing to do with whatever amount of curvature mage does or does not show fail if such selective wrap around the curvature refraction existed you cannot then claim to have filmed the actual edge of the ball earth because you might be looking at a mirage the mirage the mirage like looming uh, and other types of mirages, as I said, is lifting things up from further away. Uh, it is not bending what you can see. 
but I'm not going to dwell on Mr. Sensible's clear proof of the stationary earth. And I won't dwell on who killed who. Sorry about that. I felt a bit python. Or the ball earth refraction paradox. There is no paradox. You have either misunderstood, misrepresented, or you're just plain outright lying. I'm not going to say which it is. Only you know, I guess. Instead, I want to address the fraudulent claim that Mr. Sensible filmed the curvature of the Earth from 127,000 feet. Right, I'm going to stop you there. I have been up, or Mage has been up to that height. There is the video right in front of you. I have filmed that. So it's not a fraudulent claim that I went up there. It's not a fraudulent claim that we produced this video. It's not a fraudulent claim that what the video shows appears to be a curve. The only question is, is that curve down to the actual shape of the Earth or is it down to something else? There is no fraud there. It's just a decision as to what that evidence actually shows. Don't use the word fraud so freely. Of course, that contradicts Neil deGrasse Tyson's claim that you cannot film the curvature of the Earth from that same altitude. Actually, I think he said that you can't see it, but I guess the point still holds, and he's wrong. Anyone can make a mistake. But having said that, you could, you could say, and I think it would be fair to say, that you can't see the curve from up there because it's such a small amount of curve to the naked eye. Because that curve is only a few degrees on a vast panoramic horizon. Uh, the reason we can see it is um, by adding lines, by compressing the image side to side, or, or um, doing you know, uh, other things like that to actually uh, highlight it, like changing the, the brightness and so on. By eye, it'll be very hard to see. So in the photo, you see this curvature of Earth's surface, and you say, wow! And what have we got there? We have got a wide-angle lens Look at that curve. No one is claiming that that is what uh, Felix Baumgartner could see. And if you're saying that that's what we're claiming, then you're wrong. He's in space. Look at that. No, he's not. At that height, you don't see, you don't see the curvature of the Earth if you are two millimeters above this beach ball. It is, you just don't. That stuff is flat. <laughs> well, you may laugh, but uh, I would like to um, sort of reword what Neil's saying. You won't be able to see, as in determine, the curve of the Earth by eye from that height. That stuff is flat, it's just badly worded. Yeah, it looks flat to the naked eye. Okay, but go on, laugh it up, fuzzball. <laughs> That's pretty funny, but Neil deGrasse Tyson was correct. Oh, in which case, if we're just going to take everything Neil deGrasse Tyson says as as gospel, then of course um, you're now going to admit that the uh, Earth is an oblate spheroid. It's pear-shaped. Thank you, Taboo. Or aren't you? You're only going to accept quotes from Neil that you think support your belief. I suspect that's the case. That stuff is flat. Shut up, Neil. But let's assume that astrophysicist and planetary scientist Mr. Tyson doesn't really represent ball earthers. No, he represents himself and he represents the science that that um, he, he has carried out and he is a communicator. Not being funny, he dumbs it down for the masses and makes it interesting. Apparently he hasn't dumbed it down enough. I'm going to do a much closer analysis of this footage, but I first wanted to point out something about the local sun. Well, first of all, you have to prove that there is a local sun. We know that that's not the case uh, because uh, you get the change in the angular size during the day, you'd have to see, and it doesn't. It stays the same angular size. The fact it would have to speed up and slow down, and 101 other things. You have presented no evidence of that. That's a bold ass assertion pulled out of your hairy bold ass. As you watch the camera spin, notice that there seems to be a bit of a bulge nearer the sun. 
I'm sure the ball earthers will squint really hard and call that the curvature, but the local sun does seem to produce a light bulge more directly under the sun as it lights up more of the atmosphere. Fine. Yes, it does light up more of the atmosphere. You're going to get more of a glow. So um, take images like this one we've got in front of us now. As you can see from the wide cam that's showing it above, the sun is behind you. So you've not got that bulge in front of you, have you? So you've ruled that out. Any curve we've got on the screen right now is not due to the sun, local or otherwise. It's just another factor to keep in mind. Now, when you go to Mr. Sensible's video, he begins with the typical wide-angle lens fake curvature playing in the background. It's not fake. It is distorted because it's a wide-angle lens. And why did I choose that? Because I was pointing out that this video, this flexing, bending video, is what you normally see. So I was sending up the mage camera, which would not be producing that bending and flexing. I did send up a wide camera as well, just for the view, because you get a much how should we put it? Wider angle of view with a wide angle uh, lens. Um, it's not fake. It's just the natural distortion of a wide angle lens. Using wide angle lenses to fake the curvature is pretty much a standard for all ball earth proponents. I well, then why didn't I say, look, you can see the curve of the earth? No, I didn't even use that camera for the experiment. So you are either being very mistaken cherry picking or outright lying again take your pick i guess the actual flat horizon video wouldn't have looked so awesome for mr sensible but in the description of his video mr sensible linked to a website I by did. globe propagandist walter bislin he's not a globe propagandist in fact i don't don't hear him uh, producing videos claiming one thing or another he just carries out some very heavy duty and interesting mathematics and produces some handy dandy tools that lots of people both flat and otherwise flat and globers use such as the earth curve calculator you're happy to use that if you think it supports how much of a mountain can be seen Walter Bislin uh, was not approached by me he approached me and said uh, could he process some of those uh, video shots uh, as I said, I didn't approach him. It was not required for Mage. I didn't use his stuff. I just gave him a link because he has done some excellent work. I'm sure you've checked it out. Who conducted his own bogus analysis of Mr. Sensible's video. I'm not going to click on the link because it wouldn't surprise me if they tried to hit me with a copyright issue. So uh, you said it's bogus, but you haven't clicked on the link. You're worried about copyright, but you're happy to show my video. Of course you can show bits of my video. What you're doing is commentary. That's fair use. I have no problem with that whatsoever. And I'm sure that if you feel you could debunk what Walter has produced, he'll not only not be worried about copyright, he'll be very, very impressed and be going back to the drawing board. Somehow, I don't think you'll do that. But Walter's website shows pictures like this one and this one that seem to indicate that the alleged curvature filmed by Mr. Sensible matches the supposed curvature of the Earth perfectly. Well, two things. One, you seem to be happy to actually show images from his website without worrying about copyright. And secondly, that seems to fit the uh, curve of the Earth quite well, doesn't it? I'll have links in the description. Good. According to Ball Earther Walter, on this page, I compare the curvature of the horizon with the predicted curvature of my curvature app. The curvature shown in the video, linked above, matches exactly with the prediction of the curvature app, which is based on a globe with radius 6,371 kilometers. This means the observed curvature of the horizon is caused by the spherical shape of the Earth. So that's um, separate confirmation. I went up there and filmed it. I put unedited video I pointed out there is a slight amount of barrel distortion, so that wasn't hidden. He took that imagery, ran it against his earth curve calculator, and his earth curve calculator came up with the same figures, with the same curve. Does that not tell you something? That's two independent sources that come up with the same answer. And you think flat earthers can't even decide how far the sun is, or, or the shape of the earth, or whether there's a dome or not. That doesn't bode well, does it? Carry on. 
since so many of the globe trolls like to link to this website now is globe propagandist walter bislin telling you the truth well you're saying he's lying you can do the maths yourself or can't you i'll be honest and say i know that i can't but you're hand waving away all his very hard and excellent work when you have no ability to actually properly debunk it have you there does seem to be an almost imperceptible distortion of the camera but there is but i don't think you can see it not you anyway because i've watched your video so i know what you're going to get wrong but i'll let you um hang yourself i think it's pretty close to reality and it depends where the horizon is in relation to the view of the camera and that's important for our analysis and that's important for any analysis of high altitude footage yes it is it is very important i've stressed it on numerous occasions but nobody ever seems to take any notice of that what is important is to have that horizon line across the center section somewhere between those two reference frame lines let's see how you do now, Walter Bislin says he corrected the alleged slight barrel distortion of the camera. According to Bislin, this camera has only a slight barrel distortion, which I corrected with a Lightroom setting of 8 of 100, so that the two strings are straight and the image shows the undistorted reality. Yes, he did. So basically what he did is he removed the very slight barrel lens distortion. But I would like to point out, you're showing his quote above what I believe is a shot from the uh, dog cam and that's been flattened that is a processed image the horizon th did not look like that so i don't know why you wouldn't show his quote over some of my footage or images hmm. carry on this is where the deception takes place ah so now not only have you said fraud you're now talking deception you're quite willing to throw these accusations around, aren't you, um, TC? Hmm. But I'll let you be the judge of whether Walter was lying. I don't know why you keep going about Walter. What about me? This is my project. I'm going to show you images from Mr. Sensible's full-length balloon video. Unlike Bislin, I'm not going to distort the images in any way. And I he didn't distort them. He undistorted them what you're looking at there is raw footage with some graphical overlays but it's raw unedited footage from the mage camera that camera has a lens with slight barrel distortion therefore everything has a slight level of distortion he removed that but what we have in front of us with that slight level of distortion is perfectly adequate more than adequate of proving no, that's the wrong word of, sh of evidencing our case but let you uh, show your uh, evidence i'm going to properly show you stills from the lowest to the highest altitudes well i will i will just jump in then i don't know why you're bothering with the lowest altitudes firstly because although you could technically measure curve is going to be bloody difficult <clears throat> excuse me bloody difficult but secondly you've got all sorts of things like hills clouds and whatnot that's going to make it even harder but hey it's your show there's a reason why walter didn't do the same walter did do it he has got a number of images from various heights uh, off the top of my head i've got a feeling it was every six kilometers it might have been every 12 kilometers i'm not sure but he did it every few kilometers and each time ran his earth curve calculator against the processed undistorted image and got a match if only you'd actually had a look at his page if only you had understood his page i'm only adding a straight black line near the horizon for reference yes the line is straight if you're unhappy about the line you can download mr sensible's footage and do the exact same thing and follow the time marks yes the line is straight but for some chance some reason some unknown reason you happen to to have chosen a horizon image that's diagonal and runs from one distorting area through the non-distorting and through to the other distorting area at the other side was this a cherry pick he asks him knowingly 
No, let's just assume it's not, and you just have either chosen that one accidentally or honestly. We'll let you carry on as you choose all your other images. Here's the first still from 238 meters or 781 feet. I think everyone would have to agree that there doesn't appear to be any measurable barrel distortion at this low altitude. What? No measurable barrel distortion at this low altitude? What exactly do you think barrel distortion is? I'm going to let you run on with this because you can make yourself look stupid much better than I can, I'm sure. I'm using this low angle of the horizon because this will be the same relevant angle at the end of the footage. This is important when you conduct your own analysis. The next still is at 1,793 meters or 5,883 feet. No barrel distortion is visible. Barrel distortion will not change. Barrel distortion actually is visible in that image. Here's the A still at 2,781 meters or 9,124 feet. Ball earthers must still agree that there should not be any perceptible curvature at that low altitude. That's actually a good word, perceptible. There is curvature, and if you had the right equipment and the right weather, you could measure it, but it's going to be very, very slight. Almost, dare I say it, imperceptible. As you can see, the apparent horizon is flat, as expected, and there is little to no barrel distortion. Barrel distortion doesn't change. I can see it right there. Here's a similar still at 2,856 meters or 9,370 feet. Again, there is little to no barrel distortion. The barrel distortion is there. It's exactly the same as it was at the beginning, exactly the same as it was at the end, and I can see it. This still is 4,014 meters or 13,169 feet. Little to no distortion and the horizon is flat. Ditto. Next is 5,978 meters or 19,612 feet. Little to no distortion and a flat horizon. Bored, 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 bored. I'm so bored that even mindless violence seems boring today. Next is 10,290 meters or 33,760 feet. Notice there's an airplane in the distance. Kind of cool. Cool. Again, no distortion. Yes, there is. Next, 14,463 meters or 47,451 feet. No distortion, no curvature. I just realized I sent this imagery up with a camera with as minimal distortion as possible. And I'm arguing about the fact that there is distortion there. And a flat earther is arguing that there isn't. Unfortunately, he's not arguing that because he thinks it's an absolute, absolutely perfect camera he's arguing that because he has no bloody idea what barrel distortion is or how it works here's a still from 21,770 meters or 71,424 feet now we're pretty high again no visible curvature is present but you're still very low I'm just looking just there above that graph to just just that you can actually see there's a hump that's not a hump because of curve of the earth that's a hump because of clouds. You're too low for it to become one homogenous surface. I know it's a big word. Look it up. Here is our final still with five seconds to the balloon popping at a whopping 38,706 meters or 126,988 feet. Um, Taboo, I'd like to ask you something right now. With the first image that was going diagonal, I said, oh dear, it looks like he's cherry-picked. But then I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Every single image, every one you have taken, where you've taken a, a fairly horizontal image of the horizon, has been right here at this sort of level of the screen. None of them up there in the experimental area between the two reference frames where there's no distortion. I've got a sneaking feeling you actually do know what barrel lens distortion is and what it does. And for those who don't know, barrel lens distortion, 
looks as though the, the front of the screen is pushed out so everything's bulging slightly so at the top of the screen the image gets pushed like that so any curves above the top yellow line orange line whatever color i'm colorblind but that bright line will appear more curvy anything across the middle will appear pretty much as it is whether that's flat or curved anything down here is going to get pushed down so assuming the earth is a curve a sphere with a slight almost imperceptible curve the lens distortion is going to make it look flatter i think now having got whatever it is 10 out of 10 images all happen to be in the lower uh, portion of the screen i think at this point it is fair to say you have cherry picked unfortunately as has been shown on other videos looking at that horizon if you scrunch this image side to side i might slip that image in now if you scrunch that image side to side you'll see a curve the horizon is flat no it's curved and i think i better tell you about this barrel distortion those two lines have looked exactly the same all the way up they have to because they are two tight strings spring loaded to make sure that it, they, that they are always straight and taut you said with the lower images you couldn't see barrel lens distortion look at this lower black or dark line this string it's bent is a slight dip in it because of barrel lens distortion that has been identical all the way up and it will be identical all the way down as well it does not change with height the the distortion you can see with the lens which is only slight but that distortion is not affected by altitude that distortion is the physical qualities of the lens and how it's bending light you don't understand what the hell you're looking at do you now for the comparisons 126,988 feet with 781 feet why 5,883 feet look at those strings 9,124 feet same every time 9,370 feet same again 13,169 feet yep 19,612 feet 33,760 feet 47,451 feet, 71,424 feet. Now, let's compare the actual still from the video with Walter Bislin's pictures on his website. The pictures are at the same altitude. <laughs> this doesn't look very good for you here, Walter. <laughs> I think you shouldn't accuse it of lo not looking good for someone bearing in mind what you say shown and i'm going to show that same image in a minute and i'm just going to scrunch it down it's the raw unaltered image i'm guessing you'll need to come up with a new refraction calculator that just adds curvature to high altitude balloons that is not a refraction calculator that's not at all refraction has not calculated that curve Again, you don't know what you're looking at. You've made yourself look like a fool. The globe deception seems pretty deliberate here. Pot calling the kettle black somewhat, I think. There is zero deception. As always, there could be an error. I made, um, not an error, but, but in this case, looking at the temperatures uh, at the top, 5.8 degrees centigrade. Um, I do apologize I've forgotten oh Brian's logic pointed out that that temperature was reading higher than it should and he is correct now there's several reasons for that it could be that the Sun happened to get onto the temperature sender it could just be that the, te the temperature sender was not very accurate who knows but he pointed that out I willingly said you're quite right that looks wrong however of all the stuff you have pointed out you're wrong you have not caught us out. There is no deception. There's no point in us doing deception. If I was to lie, or if Walter was to lie about something here, someone else would say, Oi, you're lying. You're wrong. Because they would like to show how they are correct about it. 
that is i mean this is not a scientific experiment but that's how science works you have to be open and willing to be corrected you want to be corrected hell if we are wrong about this we want to know unfortunately you have not been able to show you have cherry picked evidence i always picking the images that are very very low but i will show you how even that doesn't help you out in fact due to this due to the distortion it's proof i'm sorry our globe faithful but mr sensible not only proved that the earth is stationary that there is indeed no coriolis effect but mr sensible also proved that there is absolutely no measurable curvature at a whopping altitude of 126,988 feet. You do not know what Coriolis is, do you? Coriolis requires you to be traveling at quite a speed from one latitude to another. It, do, it does, even if, even if, even if taking off from the ground, the earth did whiz away from under you, that wouldn't be Coriolis. It would be breaking the, the um, law of conservation of momentum, but it wouldn't be Coriolis. Coriolis is something entirely different, and I do not know why, but not one single flat earther seems to get the simple concept of Coriolis. Anyway, I think uh, we've talked on this long enough. Let's have a quick look at that image and bust your ass. So here is that image snapshotted from the video. We've got your black line across it. What we'll do first is adjust the exposure and so on just to get rid of some of the fuzziness then we'll compress it side to side now i don't know if you can see it it's very difficult but there is a very very slight curve i put a yellow line across it just to help what you've got to remember is this horizon that you have chosen to snapshot is in the bottom portion of the screen where Barrel distortion is at its maximum and it's tending to flatten the curve. You can clearly see how the black string behind my head is bowed downwards because of that barrel distortion. So think of the effect it's having on the horizon, which is lower still, subject to more distortion. It's going to make it look flatter. So I looked for a shot around that sort of time where the horizon is between the two lines and I came across this one. This shot was from about three or four minutes earlier and about five or six hundred meters lower, that's all. But due to the swing of Mage, it's brought the horizon between the lines. So that's a fairer test because between the lines is where you are not going to get the distortion. So we'll add the same colorization as we did before. Then we'll squish it the same as we did before with a yellow line. Once more, because of the barrel lens distortion, you can see the lower black string bowed downwards. And just above it, the Earth's horizon in an upward facing curve, which you can clearly see when you compare it to the yellow line. Boom. Well, I think it's time to check the mage rage list. Thanks everyone for joining me tonight. Look forward to seeing you all again. Until next time, stay sensible. Shut up and sit down.